Hi everybody, it's Robbie, and I've got a tip for you on tool. So watch the video, you'll see how I put this up, and I think it's worth a try. I think anybody that's having issues with small rodents, not small children, but small rodents and animals getting into your fruit, getting into your vegetables, this is definitely worth a try. So watch the video and see what you think. And I'll be back. So here I'm gonna make a fence of tool. And this is a little stiffer tool than, that, than what's behind me. I'm going to use the shorter poles. I don't need such long poles because this is just to keep the squirrels and the rabbits out from chewing on my walking onions and the different things I grow in the bricks. And I'm just going to run it along on each side short. They, won't, they shouldn't want to really climb on it. The occasional one might, but in general they won't. And what I did was I just stuck some of these stakes around going to push them in to the size I want and then I'm going to go ahead and attach my tool. This tool I don't think I'm going to close pin it. I believe I'm going to use zip ties on this one and then this way it will be more permanent and I can just reach in and take my onions, my green sorrow, whatever I decide. I might stick some more dinosaur kale in here, keep small ones growing in here and see what happens. So now I've got to go get my tool. in the house and this is 54 inches I do not need it 54 inches and I want to be able to keep the top open so I can just reach in so I'm going to cut it and I believe I'm just going to geez I could cut it in thirds but I think I'm just going to cut it in half perfectly in half and just attach it it doesn't matter if there's a little extra let's see just to hold it, so I'll see how much I've got to cut. So give me an idea. I could have it, but I'm not going to have it. I'm going to actually cut it. It's going to be my fence on both sides. And hopefully, it should last at least through winter. Jeez, I think I'm going to use the whole thing. I'm out of the shot now. I think I'm going to string the whole, pretty much the whole thing up. Almost. Wow, almost. I think I will do the whole thing. Let me show you. Not a bad deal. I'm going to make myself a tool fence. And I'm going to put it on the stakes. I'm going to bring it up to the end there. I don't think I'm going to go all the way to the end. Unless I take that geranium out. But I'll see. And then I'm going to have tool running on both sides. So I've seen the squirrels come up. And then, of course they go up the bricks. And the rabbits too. I'm hoping that will deter most of them. And then I can actually use this. To grow a lot of nice things in it. And keep them more open. And the basket, which is nice. It is only good for short things because see, you've got plants trying to grow up and they can't go through the basket. If they go through the basket, then I can't lift it or I'll rip the plant. That's what happened up there to my lettuce. It got all bent and my chamomile tea, it got bent up. But this way, it could just reach for the sky and keep going, but nothing's gonna come along and get it. So I'm gonna go cut this in half. It's 54 inches. That will be perfect. And then I could, you know, tie it on. I'm going to strap it on with some zip ties. Okay, let's go get this cut in half. Real simple. Lengthwise in half, and that's all I need. So what I ended up doing is bringing it back outside, and I folded it in half. It'd be easier if somebody else was holding it. But I folded it in half, and I close pinned it all the way along. So I'll get an idea of where to cut it. So now I know I can start here. And it's actually got a fold. So it came off the bolt with a fold. So that helps. Like I said, if it's not perfect, it doesn't matter because it's too long anyways. But I can just cut it and follow the fold.
wonder if it would tear. Oh, it's going to tear right on the fold. Perfect. Okay, that worked out good, just like fabric. It is going to tear pretty much on the fold. It's not perfect, but it looks like it's going to work. I used to work in a fabric department when I was a kid, and that was the way we were taught to do the fabric. Look at that. I now have two pieces. Now, I can go string it up. And I have two pieces. I'm debating if I want to take that geranium out. I'm the one that stuck it there. It's not the best flowers anyways for a lot of birds. I'll come back and get that. Might grab a couple of clothespins, because this way I can anchor it where I want it, and then I can zip tie it. The zip tie, I'm going to put it on the other pole so the end will be closed. This way nothing's going to bother that end. Decide how many more poles I need as I go. I can zip tie it when I'm all done. And just loosely do it get an idea how it's going to play or set up. May put another pole there. No more baskets. I can use the baskets in other places. That's so cool. Oh, this is going to be great. I can still service it. I can still plant. Let me see. It feels like it's folded. There it is. I don't want to pull it too tight, but just a little bit. And come back later and do it exactly the way I want. And if I make a mistake or I'm not happy, it just zip ties, cut them off, and put another one. This is going to be really cool. You know, working in the garden, I think a lot of you really do need pocket shirts. It's been the greatest thing. Don't carry scissors in it. I put it on sometimes just when I'm doing a video. I do not carry scissors in it. But I do carry a lot of stuff in it zip ties, if I need pipe cleaners once in a while, masking tape all the time, I try to carry my masking tape. Is this cool? I think I'm going to get a lot more production out here now. I'm going to have to recall this. That's going to be add in some more stakes for stability. This stuff weathers so good. I've got stuff from last year that I'm still using. I feel like it's folded. There. There. I don't mind if it slouches down. I just want to make sure I get the top. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And Hopefully this gives somebody an idea of what to do if they're having critter problems. A lot of you have said you've got rats or mice or squirrels. This is, this is fantastic. And I'm telling you, this has been really, really good. Look at that.
which will hold this down. Just roll, you can use the green poles, or you can just go ahead and roll it down. You could even roll big branches if you've got branches you can use. Gary had some dowels in the garage, so I used that. He wasn't using them, just short pieces. And look at that. That's going to give it a little weight. And you just put a zip tie, roll it up a little bit, so it sits in there snug. And then just put your zip tie on. When you're all done, you can clip off all the tags that are left. Look at that. Now, when a rabbit comes up, they're going to feel this, and they're not going to want to touch it, hopefully. Hopefully they won't figure out what to do, but you know what? Right now, this should work really good, and it will protect the plants. And now I can plant in here. A tip on the bricks, a lot of times I don't plant directly in the bricks. I actually inset a flower pot, and then I plant in the flower pot. Now, the bricks are full of soil, so the roots may leave, but a lot of times there's a flower pot in there. So I've got uh, green soil. I've got all these walking onions in here. I've got dinosaur kale and mint, and I can plant whatever, you know, small type plants I want to plant in here. Bok choy, lettuce, anything I want. But this will give it a little more weight and stability. And I'm gonna, going to do that on both sides. There it is, it's all done. And if you want, you can put clothespins if you want to close the top. If you don't want to, you don't have to. The other thing is clothespins can act as a weight. So if you're trying to weight, weight down the bottom, let's say the uh, tool and you don't want to use um, posts, you can use clothespins for that. It will work too. But there it is, all done. And now I have a tool fence to keep the squirrels out, rats and mice, and get some onions, and get some garlic chives, and get some different greens growing. I can even put flowers in there. I would say pretty good for being up here a week already and hasn't even been touched. Isn't that something? I did glue these balls onto the top with a simple glue gun. I had these fuzzy balls. I was going to donate them and get rid of them. I ended up with so many craft balls. And this has worked out really well. This is so if a kid or me or somebody bends down, you're going to bang yourself into this and not the point. Because that always worries me that that is, you know, sharp and you don't want to take an eye out or something or hurt yourself. So I tried it. We'll see how long the balls stay on for. But right now they've been on for quite a few days and they're doing good. I was going to use the jewelry glue, the 6000, which I know that would have worked. But I tried a glue gun and if this falls off, I'll just switch over and use the 6000 glue. You can get that at the craft store and once you put that on, there's no taking it off. So this is my finished tool fence. And let me tell you, it's been up now for almost a month. It is working great. And you can see that it's still up. It's still working. The fabric looks like new, like the very day I put it up. And I want you to see this. Let me see. See these? These are pom-poms. And I had a whole bunch of them. I bought them for something. I used to do a lot of crafts. A hot glue gun. That's all it took was a hot glue gun and put a little bit on the tip little hot glue there and then I just stuck on a pom-pom. It was better than trying to put stuffed animals on. I'm going to do that all over the garden. Okay, why do I put pom-poms and stuffed animals on here? I worry because it's a point and I think if a kid fell and went wham and it's so low that somebody could really get hurt. But with a pom-pom, no, this is soft. This is not going anywhere. I've got pom-poms all the way down and they've been on also for a month now. So it's been that long till I got the video up, but you know what? That's good. The, re it's, the reason it's good it is it shows it's been up. It's been working. All the plants I planted in here are still intact. Nothing got in here. It's open on the top. So if I wanted to have something that needed to be pollinated, the bees, I've seen them go in there and they just go up and down. What this is doing, this tool, is it's keeping out squirrels, it's keeping out rats, it's keeping out mice. Um, the skunks haven't tried to get into it, neither have the possums. It's kept out everything. It's not going to keep out anything you 
trapped in there. Like I have pulled out some slugs because they were in there. But no new ones have really gone in there. And the green sorrel and the onions, the walking onions, everything's going really good. See my walking onions? I couldn't grow them in here. Last year, the rabbits came and they started eating up all my onions. The squirrels and the rabbits. So now everything is going really good. I've even got some flowers, some pansies in there. So, and some garlic chives in the bricks. I couldn't do that before because once the squirrels found it, they would come here and they would just deadhead it. They would just chew it down to the ground. This has worked beautifully all over the yard. Gary told me he wasn't going to use it and I have seen him in the dead of the night going with his coral tool and he's wrapping all his pepinos and different things because something got to it. And now that he's wrapping it, nothing is bothering it. I had a beautiful strawberry. I wrapped the strawberry, nothing got to it. This is only if you're having an issue with, with you know, especially small rodents. People have asked me, why tool? You know, well, here's the difference. Tool is a netting. It's a very fine, fine netting. Birds can't get stuck to it. Birds can sit on it. This, this particular setup will not deter birds, but they haven't even gone in here. And birds cannot get stuck on this. This is soft. They might get their nails stuck for a second and they can pull themselves right out. But when the animals touch it or the rodents touch it, they think it's a trap because you know how mice and rats have little nails and, and rabbits do too? Well, they get stuck to it and they have to tug out of it. So it, to them, it's danger, danger. They don't want to go near it. And as long as they can find other stuff around the yard and weeds and stuff, they're not going to bother with this. So that's the main thing is it deters them. Will it get rid of everything for sure? Probably not, but it gets rid of most of it. It's working for me close to 100%. I think it's worth a try. It's so cheap, but that is the difference. When you put up bird netting, birds get caught in that and they will die because they get their legs, it, it's bigger holes and they get their legs stuck and then they try to get out and they get it twisted again. So they actually do get stuck in the netting. This they cannot possibly get stuck. Possibly just their nail, if that. I've never even seen them do it, but if they could, it would be just their nail. They can't get their whole foot stuck. And with mice and rats and squirrels and rabbits and chipmunks or whatever, um, it, it, again, it's to them, it's danger. They're getting stuck. They don't want to bother with it. They, they're, they're smart. You know, they, as far as they're concerned, they don't want to bother with it. Somebody asked me, can they cover uh, squirrel holes and rodent holes with it? You don't want them to get used to it. So no, no, this is for your plants. This is for your fruits. This is to make a temporary here. Let's swing around here to make a temporary fence. You know, this is something you don't want them to find out that this is nothing. You want them to be afraid of it. And with this, this has worked out really good here. I've got squash growing in here, zucchini and tomatoes. These are my seedlings. This is going to come off. I'm using the clothespins. It's coming off. Right now, it was just to protect the seedlings. But they're, they're on their way. They're going to they're gonna take off. And this I will have to uncover because I want to make sure that the bees can get in here. But this was just to protect the seedlings. But as far as the fence, the fence worked out beautiful. And fruit, it is definitely worth a try. If you've got apple trees, it's definitely worth a try. You have nothing much to lose. Don't go buy a whole bolt. A bolt, which is cheap, is like $10 on eBay. And that's a whole bolt. That's like 40, 50 yards. Go to your fabric store, buy a yard. It's like a dollar. It's not, it doesn't cost that much. And see if you like it. You don't like it, don't buy anymore. So you've thrown away a dollar. You may end up saving hundreds and thousands of dollars by using tool. And tool isn't hurting anybody. So with that, I hope I've given you some ideas to at least try. It works for me. It works for Gary. It works for other people. So it's worth a try. Have a great day and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye everybody.